Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey, what's happening? Is it always this freezing cold here? It always is, yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Real Estate of Retail podcast with our guests Andrew Siegel and Jose Santana from the Siegel Group. So, welcome, gentlemen. Hi, guys. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you having us. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for, for making the journey all the way to uh, our office. It was, in, it was in long the, and arduous. Yeah, <laughs> terrific. Did you ride your bike or car? We actually flew. They flew. Yeah. Where did you fly into? Republic. Republic. Street. Yeah. Nice and easy. It's yeah. great. Down the street. Good stuff. So let's dive right in here. Let's talk a little bit about how you got into the commercial real estate business. Um, so I'll, I'll start, I guess, uh, since it's longer than you. <laughs> um, my father, Mark, was um, one of the pioneer tenant rep brokers in um, in Baltimore where we're from. Um, he was one of the first people to figure out that you could take a tenant outside of your home market. So he, from you know, growing up, you know, he would spend a lot of time in Virginia. Um, we're an hour from Washington. Um, Washington is a much bigger market. And so he would go wherever the tenants would take him. And um, uh, he started in the late 60s, and um, I finished college in the late 80s, went to law school, finished in the early 90s, and um, he said, you know, I, I tried to, I guess, I had a pretty good understanding, as good an understanding as you can have of what your parent does, um, but nobody, I think, grows up thinking I'm going to be a real estate broker when I grow up, at least not a re <laughs> retail real estate broker. Um, so. When, when, when my father said, why don't you give this a try? I knew I didn't want to practice law. Um, I said, okay, that was in the fall of 92. And that's, this is all I've ever done ever since. And uh, do you re regret that decision? Never, not for a minute. Not for, not a, for a minute. minute. Abuse and make them look good, then you can ride, you know, for as long as they want to work, as long as you want to work. Absolutely, yeah. it's very, very much a, a relationship business, right? Um, so it's, it's, way more important to make the relationship than make the deal, right? I mean, ultimately, if you, if we work way too hard to, uh, to have to, you know, start fresh on every single piece of business. I feel sorry for people that do industrial for that reason. Yeah. Because if they do 30 deals a year, it's with 30 different people, and the next year it's with 30 different people. And right. They, they may never see their client ever again. Yeah. Um, you guys are awfully quiet. Are you Are you part of the podcast? We're here. We're all, this is just, you guys are enthralling. Um, yeah. That was the word I was going to use. <laughs> well, just, yeah. just making sure you guys are alive. Just, we're here. We're here. Yeah, good, good. So People were hearing what I said and like took it to heart. And that was a big deal for a young broker because everything in our business really comes down to confidence. When you advise people, you know, First of all, people don't listen to people that don't say things in a confident way. And in our business, they sense the lack of confidence instantly. It's like within you know, a split second, right? Absolutely. So to be confident, you need to, obviously you need to know what you're talking about, but you need to understand how to convey information in a way that people can understand it, that they can in turn pass it on to the people they report to. Um, and but you're not really at that point when you start, and it's and it's years, you know, when you um, think for before, before three you years. Is generous to be that much of a trusted advisor. I think in three years you can navigate around the world and understand how to put a deal together, but it would mean longer to feel the real confidence to be able to know that my opinions that I was giving to the clients were. The right ones. To speak with any ones. level of authority. Right. right. To right. some extent, that to get enough deals under your belt. What, so. it, it sometimes it's a function of how much people are mentoring you. True. Sure. If they're if you're left to your own devices and you don't really have any direction, and nobody's telling you what to spend your time on, it'll take longer. You'll be you'll you know you'll be wandering around for a while, and and this is also a business of knowing how to spend your time. I liken it to a, a portfolio. You know you you have to invest a certain amount of time. And things you that have a higher likelihood of happening, and a certain amount of time in lesser likelihood things, but there's a bigger payoff. Absolutely, and the payoffs are re usually relative to the chances, right? right? Yep. And if you spend too much time on the things that are home runs, 
you're going to be very disappointed. And um, so I want to I want to just transition a little bit into um, how has the industry changed over the years that you've been in the business? Yeah, I'd also like to hear being around it, you know, seeing your dad do it, then you starting in '92 to you know 2018. Uh, sure. The lifestyle, the life cycle that you've seen and how it's changed. 